All right, Jason Hollis Farms this morning. <laughs> Gonna do something just a little different today. Getting just about ready to go racing. Gonna be in the shop today. <laughs> Got a little, we're gonna work on the street stock first, get it completely ready. Maybe we'll get that done today and then we'll get ready to get started on the modified. Not just a whole lot to do on the street stock. Got a little bit of nose work to do from that last race that was so rough. Got a little shock work to do. We are going to put it on the scales here in a little while and get everything right. Got just a little minor body work that we're going to do. Got the heat going this morning. That thing feels good. Man, it feels good. So, going to be a pretty good day in the shop. Just about ready to go make a few laps. I would rather not do it in the cold, but we're playing with a bunch of stuff. Really excited about getting the modified ready, so we'll see what we can get into today. Going to be a pretty good day. Get this heat going, get stretched out. It's early, but that's the way I like to start, so we're going to keep knocking around. We'll be back. Serious now, y'all. This is what the driver gets to do sometimes when we're scaling out. We sit in the car and think so we can get our actual weight with the driver in the car. And have a lot of people use lead, put it in here and simulate it. But I hadn't got enough extra lead to simulate me because I've been eating so many biscuits. So I had to get in here. I got to lose some weight before we start racing. I think we're gonna weigh way too much. y'all got done what i was gonna get done with the race car today got the front end set got her scaled out made a few notes a few things we got to do so what i'm gonna do now got the new corn feeder filler full of corn got three thousand pounds in there had to put it in there with bags because i don't have a silo yet got her hooked up to the new titan and we're gonna haul this thing to mississippi got some new feeders to put out later then I got to get the Ranger over there, so it's going to get this thing going the first time. It's going to take a few trips back and forth over there, but that's all right. We'll get her done. We'll be back. All right, y'all. The wagon pulls pretty good down the highway. When, uh, when Brad came over this morning, he texted me and said if I wanted a biscuit, and he brought us a biscuit, sausage and cheese from Hardee's, and brought me a Dr. Pepper. I already had a Dr. Pepper half going, half gone. I saved it for my biscuit. When I opened the bag up, I said, what's there two in there for? He brought Pete one. So what we did, me and Pete shared the first one for breakfast. And we finna share this second one for lunch. Oh Pete, that sunshine hit me. He's about to fall out. Alright, we'll be back. Alright y'all, me and Pete made it down with the corn feeder filler. Got her unhooked. I went ahead and brought my big tires, the implement tires, because it is gonna be muddy while I'm feeling it up, and I think they won't rut the ground up quite as bad. Got Brought me an extension cord, got the trickle charger hooked up to keep the battery hot when we get ready. All we gotta do now is haul some feeders down here, and we'll be ready. This right here is one of my dad's old feeder fillers. It's an old, old wagon, but it hooks up. Pete gonna dig. It hooks up PTO. Really nice deal. This thing will swing, swing around. 
Oh, uh, it would actually be real good for what we're doing, and we'll probably use it some in the summer, maybe. But it's hooked up to the John Deere 7210 right now, and as wet and muddy as it is, we would make a mess with that thing right now. So we'll end up probably probably being able to use both of them. Oh, uh, it's gonna have to be real dry to drag the tractor around to uh fill the feeders up with this one that's one reason we the biggest reason we got this smaller one is because most of the time we'll be doing it with the ranger a lot of people thought that the ranger when you put three thousand pounds in here wouldn't pull it but it's gonna it's a load on it you just have to go slow it's not gonna be bad at all though it's gonna handle it i'm ready to get some feeders down here to where we can test this thing out. Last time we tested it, we didn't have enough feed in it to get full. But we are gonna get it. That rig right there will get her done if it's dry though. Cause that thing there, this one will hold about 3,000. I think this one's gonna hold between six and 7,000. So you get a lot more in it. And, and I like the way it's made. Should be able to where we're gonna put these feeders, pull right up to them and pump it right over in there. What y'all think Pete's digging for? He's looking for a rat or something, man. He is a mess now. What you looking for, Pete? You find it? All right, y'all, we got us a load of corn down there with the uh, new 3,000 pound corn feeder filler, as we gonna call it. Uh, gonna head back to Alabama. Got a new load of feeders in. I think I'm on. I think if I got time, I'm gonna go ahead and load them up on the trailer. Gonna take a little time to get this thing going, but in time.
of new HB feeders loaded up on the trailer. Oh, y'all seen us fool with these, these feeders, these HB feeders quite a bit in the past. We've had super, super good luck with them. Oh, um, these, these feeders here are going to our place over in Mississippi. This is, we're fixing to start a completely new program over there. Something we have never done on this large of a scale. Very, very excited about it. I have been playing with it. Of course, we fooled with this stuff all our lives. I've been playing with it real serious where y'all see me free range hunt. Uh, here in Alabama and this project that we're gonna do over in Mississippi before y'all ask it is completely free range um, Had super good luck the past couple of years here on a very small piece of property uh, Killed the big deer this year uh, Another eight point this year and a nice Eight point or two last year down here in Alabama free range stuff um, the piece of property over that we're going to be fooling with in Mississippi is quite a bit larger. Uh, I don't know. As far as I know, nobody has ever done. Nobody I know. It may have been done before, but nobody I know has ever done what we're fixing to try to accomplish on this this kind of scale. Um, it's going to be a, a uh, it's not going to just be about these deer feeders and corn feeders. It's going to be about the land management, timber management, wildlife management. Oh, fixing to get real serious with cameras, camera surveys. Oh, most of the time I don't like the cameras that much when I'm hunting because I like the surprise attack. Y'all see these deer I've killed down here. I don't have pictures of them. It's pretty exciting, but but for what we're going to do, we're going to need to use cameras. I don't really want a surprise. I want to know the deer that we're after and why we're after them when we're doing it. So this is, this is not just going to be a one year plan though. So y'all, y'all hang on this thing. This ride's going to go on for years. Uh, I think we can accomplish a lot in a year's time. Oh, uh, and that'll show us what's to come in the future. I think uh, four, four, five, six, seven year plan is probably more accurate because we're of course going to learn stuff as we go and throw everything in that we've used already over in the years past. This thing's going to get good. Uh, I am super, super excited about it and this is kind of letting y'all in on a few things why like i told y'all i got the new titan some things we're gonna be doing oh uh, so in a few days whenever it may be i don't think i'll do it tomorrow but anyway we're gonna start spacing these feeders out it's gonna take a, i got a map i don't never fool with maps a lot but i do have a map and i'm gonna try to do this thing right because you're not just gonna be perfect from the ground even though we cover the property all the time, a map's going to help us think about this thing, put the feeders in the right spot. Oh, uh, going to be interesting. I'm excited, and, and y'all are going to be a part of it and see the benefits and the rewards at the end. Uh, got a lot going to go on this summer. Oh, uh, just a lot, lot fixing to go on. But this is the first thing that I'm going to do is start this feeder process. Oh, uh, the whole thing about these feeders is holding the deer and getting them old enough. I mean, we don't really want to shoot. The bucks that we're raising to shoot or growing to shoot, whatever you want to call it, oh, uh, we want, we're going to end up wanting these deer to be at least five, six, seven years old. Just kind of have to watch them. Uh, there'll be some surprises uh, I've killed uh, on the small piece of property here in Alabama the last two years I've killed two five-year-olds so it really boosted my confidence on what we can do on a little larger scale and a little larger piece of pop property about what we can hold and what we can bring in when the rut goes on so pretty pretty excited uh, just gonna take a lot of time to get this thing together like I said a lot of 
land management, a lot of timber management and stuff going on. I don't, I don't know. I wish I knew somebody that had done this exactly the way I want to do it. I don't think they have. Uh, the colleges probably have never had opportunities to study and do what we're about to do. They probably got a lot of information, but I'm kind of hard headed. I want to do it like I want to do it. And I think it'll work. I really think it'll work. I've got some people that I know that's doing a lot of stuff like we're doing already. It's close to the scale we're doing it. Oh, most of the people that you talk to that's doing probably what they're going to be lacking on what we're going to do is the timber management. This is going to be a big, big key to where we don't have to do quite so much of the feeding. It's just kind of more to hold them. And the whole key to this thing is keeping the deer till they get old enough and mature enough to what you want to shoot. And then doing a, in this deal that we're going to do, uh, a lot of people are confused when you start talking about uh, uh, a buck program on as far as shooter bucks and stuff. They think, man, I don't want to do that. I'm going to end up, I can't shoot. You know, everybody wants to shoot when they go hunting. I mean, that's just part of it. Uh, but what I know for a fact it entails when you get into the really mature buck program, you're going to end up shooting more than you ever have because. If you've got good genetics and got good goals, there's gonna be deer there that, like the big seven point that I killed over in Mississippi. If we were really hunting this place and studying it like we're about to do, he would have got shot a year or two ago to where he didn't breed anything. I'm hoping that we can get to the point to where if we've got a three-year-old, possibly a four-year-old that's a six seven eight point and he doesn't have at least nine or ten points unless there's something special about him we want to let him go i'm hoping we can get to that point with what we're doing and it's just just going to take time going to take studying and a lot of effort but i'm ready i'm ready and i'm ready to carry y'all along with us and we'll just y'all watch it happen and see it happen as we do but anyway I'm about to call it a day. Sun's going down. I still got to feed the mules and horses and the dogs. And me and Pete's going to call it a day. If y'all like our stuff, subscribe to us. Hollis Farms. Hats, t-shirts, and stickers. HollisFarms.com. Appreciate y'all watching. Out of here.